Like a crescent moon, the Jura curves northwest of the Swiss Alps between France and Switzerland. Here lies the Val de Travers, where the once banned absinthe has been brewed since the 18th century. Initially, it was used medicinally, but soon the drink was enjoyed for pleasure. In the Jura kitchen, absinthe can be used to make anything from ice cream to flambéing fish. Even when it was forbidden to do so, Francis Martin has always distilled absinthe in secret. It worked. They never caught me. The new absinthe. <laughs> the craft of absinthe making has been passed down to the sun. Does it need tweaking or is it good the way it is? It's only Philippe's sister who isn't a keen absinthe drinker. If there were no alcohol in it, I'd almost like it. The village of Beauvresse lies deep in the Val de Travers, almost on the French border. When the ban on absinthe production was lifted in 2005, Francis officially opened his little distillery. A few months ago, his son Philippe gave up his well-paid job in IT and took over the business. This is the treasure cave of the distillery and where the different plants are dried that give the absinthe its aroma. Absinthe is known as the green fairy. For the top secret herb mixture, common wormwood and Roman wormwood are just two of the 10 herbs used. The distillery is in the cellar, and Francis is still there every day to help, even if the reins have been handed over to his son. He's still the custodian of the tradition. A new batch is made twice a week. Wait, I'll add the rest. Yes, put it all in. Any alteration in the composition of the herbs changes the taste. These are century-old recipes that Francis has always honored. Whether his son will continue in the same way remains to be seen. In our absinthe mix, we put common wormwood, Roman wormwood, lemon balm, uh, verbena, peppermint, aniseed, star of anise, fennel, licorice, and coriander. We use 10 herbs for our recipe. You can make absinthe with five or six, but this way it has a better aroma, that special something. Wow. The cult drink of the Bohemians was banned due to its supposed psychoactive effect caused by the thujone molecule. There's always talk of this supposedly dangerous thujone, but it's not so dangerous. It depends on the dose. You'd have to drink 60 glasses a day with the maximum thujone content before there's any brain damage. Now water, a lot of alcohol, and the special herb cocktail is poured into the distillery. First, the herbs need to soak for a couple of hours. This is the way it's always been done. Francis takes tradition to heart. There was already a distillery in the Val de Travers in 1761. We have a lot of experience and I think our ancestors did it the right way. There's no reason to change anything. Francis's wife, Therese, and daughter, Karine, are preparing an absinthe ice cream souffle for dessert. Today, the whole family is getting together for lunch. First, egg yolk and sugar are whisked together. Three? That's enough. Does anything else go in the eggs? No, nothing at all. Not even a pinch of salt? 
OK, je regarde. This is Karine's first time okay. making absinthe ice cream souffle. She's the only one in the family who doesn't like absinthe or alcohol at all. She views the family trade with a hint of skepticism. The beaten egg white is now carefully added to the yolk. How much do you put in? 100 milliliters. We beat the cream and then mix it all carefully. Therese has assured her daughter that you won't taste the alcohol, but only the herbs, which will give the souffle a special flavor. It's good. Goodness, it's like butter. It's just OK. Has anyone ever thought of making absinthe butter? That no one has tried. It's a little like the famous president souffle. But Mitterrand can't try this one. But he did try one. He was in Neuchâtel and, although it was banned, he was served a special dessert. What did the menu say? Absinthe? Soufflé? No, green fairy soufflé. So you could guess that it was absinthe. It was forbidden to distill absinthe, and you could get into a lot of trouble if you were found out. The souffle is put into the freezer so it can turn into an ice cream souffle. Absinthe production was legalized in Switzerland in 2005. Philippe does his delivery rounds twice a month to supermarkets and independent stores. Now that I've taken over the distillery, some things will be reorganized. I want to develop the business. Why not find a new market and some clients abroad? I know I can't just expand, the rooms are very small. I want to continue making a quality product and stay a craftsman. I don't want to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Taking over the business wasn't the only thing that brought Philippe back to the village of Beauvres. There is a certain magic in the Val de Travers, and somewhere here you can find the green fairy. Sometimes she can be found in the forest. You have to be patient. She is not easy to find, she hides herself. The fairies, the fairies, they are women. You can see them on most of the absinthe labels. Not necessarily naked, but pretty women. Good morning. Morning. I'm bringing the absinthe. That's great, thank you. I'll leave it here? Perfect. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thank you, bye-bye. Children used to take nips of the absinthe, but for Karine's children, an extra dessert will be on offer. I'm not going to make a second souffle, but a little chocolate cake for the kids. Yeah, if they want to drink absinthe one day, that's fine, but they're still too young. To be honest, I'm making the cake for me too. You know I don't like alcohol. And as you're here, you can make the egg whisks clean. It's ready in 10 minutes. Here we go. I won't say no. <laughs> the distilling family is trying to taste the different herbs in the ice cream souffle. It's delicious. The chocolate cake is ready, but Karine can't forego at least a taste of the souffle. 
The dessert even passes the test of the strongest critic, but only for a spoon or two until it's back to the chocolate cake. After lunch, Francis makes his way back to the distillery. The herbs have been soaking in the alcohol for long enough, and the first batch should be flowing out of the copper alembic stills. But there's a small surprise waiting for Francis in the distillery. So we uh, have a small problem. We forgot to turn it on. Never mind, the day is still young. Now Philippe is self-employed, he makes use of his time and enjoys an afternoon walk. Hey, Alex. Hey, Philippe, how are you? His friend Alexandre often comes to this spot to fish. Maybe he'll get lucky and catch some dinner. A few trout are biting. I'm hoping for a big one. I brought a little something to keep you happy in the meantime, so you don't give up hope. Philippe has brought another local absinthe creation, absinthe salami. They air dry the sausages in the distillery. I think it's delicious. I like it. It tastes good dried. It's beautiful. Oh, I'll reel this one in. Beautiful. Ah, it's still fighting. Ah, you have to take aim, take the fin and kill it immediately. A good catch. <laughs> Francis is taking on the next shift at the distillery. He wants his son to still have a little freedom before he takes over entirely. When I was 25, my uncle suggested to me that I take over the illegal business. I remember it very well. I really liked the idea that it was forbidden. My house was the last one in the village, and so the wind would blow the fumes into the forest. I didn't take risks and never distilled when the weather was good. Not even my best friend knew that I was making absinthe. Absinthe's good now. It's about 90% alcohol. You can feel it. How the aroma will develop is hard to say at this point. It's still too strong. Philippe has asked his sister over for dinner. He's still trying to convert her to be an absinthe appreciator. And because the children are staying over with friends, he can try with his favorite alcoholic dish, absinthe trout. And why not? It's hard cutting the fillets. That's an art form. I'm glad I only have to cut the carrots. It's a lot easier. It's no longer alive, but it's still hard to take apart. How shall I cut them? Like this? Exactly. The siblings have always made a good team. As children, they had to stick together and keep their parents secret. When it was time to distill, the bathroom was always off limits. I remember when we weren't allowed to even have friends over. Grandma distilled too. I was over at hers with a friend, and when he needed to use the bathroom, she said, no, it's blocked, go at home. One time, when I was going to the theatre, I had car trouble or something, so Dad lent me his. When I got to the theatre in No Chalet, the technicians were there. They liked to drink absinthe. And when I got out, they said, wow, it smells of absinthe. For the trout, Philippe fries spring onions in some butter. How are the carrots doing? The carrots were blanched in vegetable stock 
and Karin is now adding some butter and honey for them to caramelize in. Is that right? And now, finally, the event that makes this into Philippe's favorite dish will also hopefully win over his sister. You're from playing it here? Yes, but you need to turn off the extractor fan, otherwise it gets dangerous. Don't you want to do it next door? There's more room. Woo! Ah, great. And now the alcohol vaporizes. And how will it taste, considering I'm not a fan? It just gives it a light aroma, very light. It really isn't strong. Just an extra little taste. The dish should no longer have an alcoholic tang, just trout seasoned with absinthe herbs. I like it. It really is good. Philippe has done it. His sister is truly enjoying something that was made with absinthe. The next morning, it's an early and active start for the entire family. You can only get up the mountain to the family hut with snowshoes. Francis and Therese are hurrying ahead so they can get the house warmed up. Philippe and Karine carry on with the kids. We're nearly there. Just a few minutes. I hope the fondue's already ready. We're sinking deeper than before. There's the hut. Voilà. Ah, I see them coming. Good morning. How are you? That's a lot of people coming to prepare the fondue. How wonderful. <laughs> Once the glasses have defogged, the work can begin. Martin makes a half and half fondue. Half Gruyère cheese and half Vacheron Fribourgeois. Two kilos of cheese have to be grated. Therese adds some soda powder so the cheese is a little easier on the tummy and cornstarch to make it creamy. Finally, a few glasses of white wine are added to the mix. Francis, can you get the cherry liqueur? We forgot the cherry liqueur, but we have a plum schnapps. That works too. A colleague once put ancient schnapps into the fondue. It was unique, but it worked. Good, that replaces the cherry liqueur. No problem, I'll get it. There it is. There's still enough. Thank you, great. Watch out, children. <laughs> Air-dried meat is served with the fondue and bread. For the chefs, there's wine, and for the children, water. Wait, Nora gets one more card. But yes, you got me first. He's cheating. On the stove, the cheese is heated until it's completely melted. Can someone turn on the burner? Finally, the cheese has melted. Fresh pepper is added to the bread and Francis explains the rules of the game. OK, children, every time you drop your bread and the cheese, you have to pay for a bottle of wine. Or you have to run around the house outside naked in the snow. <laughs> Karine has made some tea, which helps with the digestion of all the cheese, just like the wine and cherry liqueur for those drinking alcohol. The only thing one shouldn't drink is water. Hey. 
Ah, Nora, a bottle. Nora, what do you want to do? I'll pay for a bottle. OK, see, it can happen. After the hearty lunch, the children go out and enjoy the snow. Uncle Philippe also joins in on playtime. I'll dig a little too. Careful with that stick. I'll start with the living room and then I'll do the bedrooms for the kids. And the beds? Those I'll do afterwards. Careful, I'll try it out. The living room is big enough. Is it comfy? <laughs> While the others are busy, Francis steals away into the woods. There's an old bootlegging tradition that he hasn't handed over to his son quite yet. In an old tree trunk nearby, there's a hiding place. I put this here for the hikers and make sure there's enough there. It's, a, it's an old tradition we have. When people come to the spring, they look for a bottle like this. There's no money box. It's a gift for the tourists. Philippe is so involved with his igloo house that he's lost track of time and now has to hurry back to the village. So the newly distilled absinthe can be enjoyed, Philippe adds water. Next, he checks if the alcohol content is right. Now the drink can be filled into the bottles. It's a special batch. His father doesn't know that he's been distilling with a new recipe, his own creation. When I took over the distillery, I developed a new absinthe. Now it's ready. So far, no one has tried it. The bottles only need to be sealed before his new absinthe is made official. Philippe has invited a few friends and family to try the new drink. His fishing friend, Alexandre, is there too. It's great that you all came. I'm showing you a new creation. It's not just the label, but it's also the absinthe. Ice cold water is dripped over a sugar cube. A new absinthe served according to old tradition. It's 72 percent. The children get to enjoy absinthe syrup without alcohol. You can turn the glass like a wine glass. Like every aniseed drink, the absinthe goes cloudy when it's diluted. The etheric oils of the herbs are soluble in alcohol, but not water. <laughs> Along the side of the glass, you can see the blue tint. Those are the etheric oils of the plants. <laughs> Do you like it? Do you like the aroma, or should I change something? It's full in the mouth. The taste stays. It's very pleasant. I like the floral taste it has. Wonderful. Mm, if there were no alcohol in it, I'd really like it. Ah, if it's even liked by those who don't enjoy alcohol, then it's a success. The taste, yes. But it's still very strong. 